Well, we've been talking about this a lot, and now it's happening tomorrow morning. Utahns are in for a special treat when the moon moves in front of the sun, blocking sunlight and creating a fantastic ring of fire in the sky. Yeah, we're in the sweet spot for this annular eclipse. It's not a total solar eclipse, but we'll have one of those soon enough. Here to talk about how to safely view this eclipse and what else is coming up is NASA expert Nikki Rail. And are you a heliophysicist? I'm actually a biologist by training, but now that's spaceflight, so go figure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we still want to talk to you about this. So, so okay. this is pretty exciting. So tell us what we'll see in the safest way to be able to look at it. Yeah, and you are absolutely right. You are in a prime location for seeing this partial eclipse tomorrow. So anytime the moon moves between us and the sun, it's an eclipse event. Tomorrow, this ring of fire or annular eclipse, we're going to see a, a glowing border around the sun. Um, moving into April next year, where we'll see a full solar eclipse. Tomorrow, the path of totality is going to go from Oregon down to Texas. So much of the western United States is going to get really close to um, totality. And the rest of the United States is going to see um, less of a, you know, a partial eclipse. Maybe it looks like a cookie with a bite out of it um, and not quite the ring of fire event. So it's really cool where you're located. It is really cool, and people are excited to see it. And of course, just just even for the view. Now we know that that NASA, of course, looks at these things. What what are we learning from them? Is there science behind it? What are, what's the takeaway for everyone and NASA? Absolutely. So there's really unique conditions during an eclipse. Things that we can't replicate. We can't go, you know, put something up to block the sun on our own. We have to have these natural phenomena to create these unique conditions, and we can study. Um, the outer edge of the of the sun called the corona or the outer atmosphere and how that um, we don't often have the opportunity to visualize that except for eclipse events. We can also understand how energy is flowing into the Earth's atmosphere um, and that when we block some of that energy, we get better insight into how that uh, some of the atmosphere events are working. So we can use sounding rockets, balloons, telescopes, even radio because radio waves propagate differently or flow through the atmosphere differently during eclipse events. So that's a really phenomenal opportunity for science. Yeah, so which is better to, to be able to really study some of these things you're talking about? A, an annular like we're going to have now or the full solar eclipse that we'll see, well, we won't see it very well in Utah, but we'll have in April. So I don't know if there's a better, there's just a different. Because we can't create in these conditions on our own, it just creates an opportunity for science under specific um, conditions. And for a partial eclipse, that means really visualizing the outer edge of this ring of fire. And a full eclipse, it's more opportunity to see the corona. So the science is different, it's not better, it just means you know what specific things we're looking at for each opportunity. And both of them yield incredible science return for us. So tell us about the full eclipse, because that event is coming next year, but um, we may not be in as prime of a position, I understand, <laughs> to see that yeah. one. <laughs> Yeah, so that on April 8th of next year, we're going to see a full eclipse that's going to, the path of totality is going to go from Texas up to Maine. And so it's a more prime viewing for the full uh, totality on the East Coast. But that doesn't mean you won't still see a partial eclipse in, in Utah and in the western parts of the United States. Um, and in that moments of totality, it's going to get very dark. We're going to lose lots of visible light because the moon is going to block out so much of the sun, where tomorrow we're still going to be able to see visible light around the edge of the sun. Yeah, I remember the one four years ago that was pretty good in Utah and uh, the full mm -hmm. eclipse. And it was kind of creepy, you know, middle of the day. Right. Sun's mm -hmm. up and blue skies and all of a sudden it gets kind of dark. Very interesting yeah. events to watch. So, all right, Nikki Rail, and your business card says Director for Flight in the Heliophysics Division at NASA Headquarters. Thanks a lot for joining us this morning. <laughs> it's a long Thank title. You so much. <laughs> nice talking to you.